The Beatles are one of the most iconic bands in all of music. Similarly, The Lord of the Rings is one of the most iconic stories in all of fiction. Well, what if I told you that in the mid-1960s, those two worlds almost collided, when the Beatles were planning to make a musical Lord of the Rings movie? Well, that's the movie we'll be discussing today, as we break down the development and cancellation of The Beatles' Lord of the Rings. The year was 1965. The Beatles' second film, Help, would come out at the peak of Beatlemania. Sometime after the film's release, Dennis O'Dell, a film producer who had worked with the Beatles before, suggested that their next film should be an adaption of the literary classic The Lord of the Rings, done as a musical. The band, who all happened to be fans of the books, loved the idea and decided to pursue the project. It was decided that Paul McCartney would play Frodo, Ringo Starr would play Sam, George Harrison would play Gandalf, and John Lennon would play Gollum. By this point, the band had released its first two films with the distribution company, United Artists, and they were under contract to make one more film with the company. As fate would have it, the executives at UA, separately from the Beatles, had become interested in making a Lord of the Rings movie. So when the band approached them with the idea of doing Lord of the Rings, not only did it fulfill the band's need of finishing out their contract, but it also gave the company an easy avenue to make Lord of the Rings. As a result, the pitch was met with approval. The entire band was interested in the project, though John Lennon was really spearheading this venture. His top choice for director was Stanley Kubrick, who was coming off of his work on Dr. Strangelove to helm the project. With these plans beginning to come together, that raises the question, why did it get canned? Lord of the Rings was ultimately taken down by two major back-to-back -back rejections. When the band approached Kubrick to direct, he rejected the offer. Despite also being a fan of the books, he believed that translating the series into a movie wouldn't be feasible due to the complexity of what would need to be on screen. He believed that the filmmaking technology to do something like that just wasn't there yet. Upon hearing this rejection, the band's interest in the project began to wane. But they pushed on and went to J.R.R. Tolkien, the writer of the trilogy himself, and asked him about acquiring the movie rights, which at the time he still owned. Tolkien immediately refused, on the grounds of him not liking the idea of the Beatles doing the movie, finding their music overly aggressive. Ironically enough, a garage that the band used to practice in was just three doors down from Tolkien's house. In one of his many letters, Tolkien even stated, In a house three doors away dwells a member of a group of young men who are evidently aiming to turn themselves into a beetle group. On days when it falls to his turn to have a practice session, the noise is indescribable. So perhaps there was a slightly personal dimension to Tolkien's rejection and dismay for the band in general. But with that, the Beatles' Lord of the Rings was cancelled. The trilogy of books is so dense and complex that it couldn't possibly have worked as one movie. Additionally, the more madcap and trippy energy associated with the Beatles and what they did on film, I don't believe that would have meshed well with the more naturalistic fantasy that's described in the books. Lastly, Kubrick was right. Filmmaking technology just wasn't there yet in terms of properly capturing the scale and scope of that story. There were so many factors stacked against the band in this situation that I believe had this film been made and released, it would have been an unmitigated disaster for every party involved. Ultimately, I think that it was for the best that this movie never saw the light of day. But that's the story of The Beatles' Lord of the Rings, and the end of yet another episode of Canned Goods. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, be good to each other, and stay Hemmas.